Okay, we are on to eGrip configuration, and we are using my default uh, routing topology we've been using uh, for the last few videos. And uh, again, you can do this in GNS if you wish. Uh, we're doing it in Packet Tracer here. It doesn't matter for these uh, exercises. And I have blanked out all of our previous routing protocol information on these routers, so it's just IP addresses. We have our 192s on these switches and the 10 dot networks in between our routers right now. Uh, and you'll see pretty quickly here how similar eGrip configuration is to OSPF and even to RIP. Uh, they're all pretty similar once you get into doing the actual commands. So we're going to create just a single autonomous system in eGrip which is uh, similar to the idea of areas in OSPF. Uh, so we're going to go into our main router and do router eGrip and then an autonomous system number. So this is not a process ID like OSPF. This is like the area in OSPF. So we're going to create one autonomous system, which is one group of routers. So don't confuse this with the process ID on OSPF, even though it's in that same spot. It's a little weird, but it's the way they do that. So we're going to create one autonomous system called number one. We can then define a router ID, just like with OSPF. Uh, we can tell it router ID and, and define that, or we can let it automatically determine based on the highest IP address or highest loopback that would win over a IP address of an interface. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as is for now, uh, since it's not necessary. Next thing we would do is configure our uh, network commands. So this is very similar to OSPF in this regard. So we're on the central router, so we need to do network commands for our 10 dot networks. So what I can do is network 10, 0, 0, 0 for that first one. And I can then provide a wildcard, just like with OSPF. Or I can press enter right now, and it will use the classful address, just like with RIP. So this is kind of where it's similar to both. Uh, if I push enter now, it will take any interface that's 10 dot anything, basically. If I give it a wildcard mask, that'll be specific to that network only. Uh, I like to be specific just because I'm picky like that. So I'm going to provide it that specific network. And since this is not OSPF, we don't have anything else to enter. There's no area. Uh, there's nothing else. So th that's it. You just provide the network and the, the wildcard mask, and then you're done. So I'm going to do that for our four connections. We can also do passive interface when we get to these outer routers. Uh, just like with all the other uh, routing protocols, we can do a passive interface command. Uh, I'm also going to do no auto summary, just like we were talking with RIP. Uh, summarization is a great idea for reducing the amount of uh, update packets that are sent and uh, the size of your tables, but uh, I'm just going to leave it at no auto summary for now. And now we're going to go into our other routers and configure them. eGrip1 and then my networks. So this is 4.0 over here. And look, it's doing that adjacency, just like I mentioned with the uh, hello packets. It's going to bring up its neighbor uh, adjacencies, just like OSPF. up. You see how quickly that actually uh, creates an adjacency. It's very fast. And again, you can see how simple it is to configure. Uh, if you have a basic routing infrastructure, 
all of these routing protocols there are only three or so commands it's very simplistic okay let's go back to our main router and now we have all our routes it's that quick it's actually it's, it's it's faster to converge than OSPF. It's just here's my link info. Uh, do the termination of hops, and you're good to go. Uh, it's very very fast uh, protocol. So they're defined in our routing table based on that D. Uh, that tells us it's a low interior egrip. Uh, it's our network that we're trying to get to. The administrative distance. Uh, that's the calculated. Uh, hop value for uh, egrip. It has a bit more of a complex calculation. Uh, we have our next hop IP and uh, interface. And then this is the amount of time since it's uh, been up. So you see that keeps counting up. And you'll have that for all. So you'll see here I have on my central router uh, a static catch-all route. Uh, my Gateway Blast Resort's been configured. So what I want to do is uh, get this to be distributed to the other routers because if we go check the other routers you'll see that they do not have a Gateway Blast Resort either configured or learned. So I want to get that there. So in the other protocols we've been able to say uh, uh, we've been able to say uh, default information originate and that will originate my default route configuration uh, but with egrip we don't have that so the way to do so is to uh, redistribute our static uh, redistribute our static routes uh, which can potentially be a problem because you could have other static routes on a router so it's uh, kind of a silly way of doing things but that's what's available for egrip so We just redistribute static. And now we have on another router here, it's received that static route uh, and it's now put that in its gateway of last resort. And it'll show up as an EX route. So that's an egrip external route. Still be an egrip route, but it'll be egrip external. Just like we saw with uh, the OSPF routes and such, uh, they'll show that additional information stating that it's an external route instead of just uh, the internal network. So that's how you redistribute your default gateway information. Uh, it's unfortunate that you don't have that default information originate command. Uh, please do note that it with egrip you have to do redistribute static. Uh, it's, it's a little different. If you were using IPv6 in this network uh, pretty much everything would be the same uh, for command wise except we would have IPv6 uh, prepending some of the uh, commands and you'd have to turn on IPv6 routing initially with that IPv6 unicast routing command uh, otherwise it's pretty much the, the same deal the router ID though is a IPv4 looking address just like with OSPF where it uses that data decimal uh, Got a decimal notation for the router ID, it's 32 bit number. Uh, it's not an IPv6 number. As far as uh, show commands, though, there's some show commands that are useful to you, and I've done some of the basic ones so far, but uh, egrip specific, uh, there's really two that you'll probably want to look into uh, show IP egrip neighbors will show you your neighbors that you're connected to and some information about them as well as show IP egrip interfaces so it'll tell you what interfaces have egrip on it uh, and then some of the reliability information and uh, traffic info how many peers are connected and so on uh, so those are two are specific for egrip the rest does still apply so you can do show IP route just like you've been seeing me do we can do show IP protocols, which will give us information on what protocols are configured and detailed metrics that are uh, defined. 
we'll get into some of these metrics and that uh, more advanced calculation it, it does uh, going forward. And then of course we have uh, the standard show IP interface brief which will give you basic interface info. So, uh, and for the IPv6 versions of those, the the commands are identical, <laughs> except if instead of saying IP show IP, it's show IPv6. So, they're all basically the same. So that's a basic uh, eGrip network. You can see how quick and easy that is to configure, uh, and it's the basic idea is the same as RIP or OSPF. Uh, the only difference being it uses the phrase autonomous systems to refer to its area essentially. Uh, if you're comparing it to OSPF, and that command initially is a little bit different, so you saw me put the uh, the AS number after router egrip instead of defining it per network like we did in OSPF. So that's really the the difference is there. Uh, so we will go into some details on the metrics that you uh, you saw defined up here, what these metrics mean, uh, and how the dual algorithm works a little bit more in detail. Uh, and why that will make a little bit more sense as to what these um, values mean in reference to how far away a network is.